welcome to MTV News Update for today, Friday, January 12, 2018. Your top headlines for tonight. Government prepared to support Guyanese living in Venezuela amid the worsening economic crisis. Government left to fund its own hydropower projects, says the finance minister. And more sugar workers tell government to use some of the oil bonus and pay severance packages in full. An encored duo arrested for trafficking five Venezuelans for sexual exploitation. With the details of these and other stories, I'm Ashley Scotland. Thank you for joining us. Beginning tonight's newscast, we tell you that the government is prepared to provide housing for Guyanese citizens living in Puerto Ordaz, Venezuela, who may be suffering as a result of unrest in the city. The unrest stems from the food shortage in Venezuela as a result of plummeting oil prices. More from Sandy Ramatar. Minister of State Joseph Harmon said between 12,000 and 25,000 Guyanese lives in the city. As such, the government has pledged to provide support to those suffering as a result of the unrest. The once booming industrial city has been like many other parts of Venezuela, plagued with food shortages and a malaria outbreak. We are in touch with our council and what I can say to you is that in the event that life, limb and property of Guyanese citizens who are there and who require the assistance of the government to relocate to Guyana, we are prepared to provide that service. Those persons affected would sometimes cross the border and inhabit Mabaruma, Port Kaituma and Maruka, according to Harmon. However, a robust immigration outfit and health board is in place to facilitate support to those persons. In the event that something overspills in Port Adas, what I can say to you is that we have made arrangements at the, um, at our side of the border um, to receive those residents and even Venezuelans who might be fleeing from violence in those communities. We have an international obligation to provide certain limited facilities for them and we are prepared to do that. On a positive note, the Guyana Consulate in Venezuela has not reported any security threat to their staff. Minister Harmon said the government will wait on a call from the ambassador stationed there to a certain where the Guyanese are under threat. At least five food stores were looted overnight with police sources saying some 20 people had been arrested according to Reuters. Angry Venezuelans also blocked three major roads to demand anti-malaria medicine, food, cooking gas and spare parts for trucks. Venezuela has been plundered into an economic crisis after oil prices plummeted. The nation heavily depends on oil revenues to keep its economy afloat. Sandy Ramutar for MTV's News Update. Regardless of Guyana's potential to have natural gas to produce energy, the government is still pushing to establish sources for clean and renewable energy. It is against this backdrop that the finance minister affirmed that Guyana will have to self-fund the hydropower plant as there is no company willing to do so presently. Find out more in this Nickel John Do report. Minister of Finance Winston Jordan during a recent interview said, the government will have to finance its own hydropower project. He noted that multilateral agencies have become very skeptical to fund these kinds of projects. The previous administration had begun the process to build the Amila hydropower plant to supply renewable energy for the country. However, the project was stalled because the contractor that was employed to construct the road was incapable of doing so. The cost of that road was 15 million US dollars. However, the cost skyrocketed to 40 million US dollars. Several parts of the road began to collapse, stalling the construction of the access roads. Minister Jordan is optimistic that the oil and gas revenues will be a source of income to have hydroelectricity. Um, or our own ability now to do the hydropower. You know, one of the major problems of getting the hydropower program off the ground is lack of financing and um, you don't have agencies out there particularly the multilateral agencies who are interested in financing hydropower large hydropower projects anymore i think the last one to pull out i believe is the world bank and um, and so we, a lot of these things will have to depend on our own resources this present administration has begun to install solar panels on most government buildings 
This trend was started by private sector companies even before the coalition administration took office in May 2015. In its 2018 budget, the government announced that a comprehensive energy mix with natural gas is being actively considered as a prime component. Minister Jordan had stated that in the meantime, feasibility studies are being examined to have hydropower at Kumu and Mokomoko Falls. The government has also commenced a solar farm in Mabaruma, Region 1. Two other solar farms are to be established in Bartica and Port Kaituma. Nikhil John, the reporting for MTV News Update. A mother and her son have been taken into police custody after an unlicensed .380 pistol was found in the woman's car. The woman is a 58-year-old medical practitioner. The gun was found in the car which was parked along Sheriff Street. Her 22-year-old son, who is a student at a tertiary institution, has since indicated to investigators that he found a weapon three weeks ago. Dozens of sugar workers from Enmore Estate braced the heat of the sun to express their concerns and dissatisfaction with the decision made by the Grange administration to pay 50% of their severance in January and the remainder before December. They are calling on the government to use some of the money obtained from the signature bonus from ExxonMobil to pay sugar workers a severance in full. Lashana gomes Cornelius followed this report. Sugar workers of Enmore Estate, who were made redundant, are utterly overwhelmed by the treatment they are receiving by the government. Earlier today, News Update visited some of those workers who boldly disparaged the action taken by the government to pay the workers 50% of their severance in January and the remainder to be paid in the year. Field officer of the Enmore Estate, Rampersad Prashad, lambasted the move and related that it is the workers' rights to demand and have their severance paid in full, not in part. We want with full severance. When you give workers half of the severance, they spread out half. When you get the next half, you're going to finish. I mean that, that, that is not fair to us. We are demanding our full severance. They, they give us the letter, we accept the letter. Everybody is without a job. The holy workers of East Amari Estate seek benefit and tenure. Every week, management of the estate are promised to the worker that they will pay this money. They are not paying no money. They got the people turn up at the pay office, they are lock the pay office gate, and they are not going away. They don't tell nobody anything what is going on. So these are the type of people we got in the estate. Well, I'm not speaking to you. Me caught Cain for 23 years. And the only thing one we know about is called Cain. If you meet a 50 year, I don't know to do Mr. to work, I don't know to come to work, I know to drive a car, but some people may know to drive a car. We grow up in sugar. This is a sugar industry with it. People are 50, 55 years, what job they can do? They can go climb a height, they can go climb a 20 feet, 30 feet height for nail a piece of wood. What they're doing there is for people's personal benefit. The workers alleged that the Granger administration's promise of the good life is a lie. To top it off, the workers are claiming that the government is in a much better position to pay their servants packages in full, pointing to the fact that U.S.-based oil giant ExxonMobil paid over U.S. $18 million as a signature bonus to the government. The workers are asking the government to use some of that money to pay their servants in full. However, the government said the money is to be used for legal fees to fight a Guyana-Venezuela border controversy. I have to get plenty more. That's what the NIS do to people. And guys go there to people too. So the government need to look after this thing then properly. He promised people a, a good life. This is a good life. But well, you have to take the street, we're going to take the street. Jim Suku laid on ET Ward with Granger and Harman. I said this month, then we are going to be full severance. We don't want to have severance. Right now, we may hear wheels is a ghost thumb. Right now, enterprise is a ghost thumb. Come when you walk on the road, all about, all about health and skeleton. You got, people got three, four children going to high school. What thing happen? Right now, six weeks, we ain't getting a day work on now. We have to find money every week. Send them a lesson, find money for pay for CXC. I have two, one. Going to high school, one going to um, primary. Waiting to happen, people have to take on their children. 
we can not afford it. We asking for, we asking. We don't want sick benefit next month and um, 10 year July month. We want all the money this month. That's so how we intend to go take the road in tongue. Now up the East Coast and in village. How the minister that I get a full monthly pay? What happened to every sugar worker for every full severance? Have got wife, got picnic, for send a school. Wife got to do work, got to go shop. But you don't go shop, you know, empty bag, pick fear. That's what Granger want to do. And them, they, they say, don't I say happy life. What them, them are bank from the aisle? They can't get aisle. They waste and they sit down there. I pull them back it. Because the people in the country suffer. What I want to say, I feel that if the privatized want to this estate, the government should give them. So the people them can have jobs back and go back to their life normally. Why men mostly work at sugar estates, for some mothers and wives of sugar workers of the East Demerara estate, the entire closure and diversification of most sugar estates have left their family's livelihood hanging on by a thin thread. Because remember, they are caught thin cutter, so I don't know if you're going to be able to do anything else than that. But they're going to have to try because we got to get money. I got Right now it's just a first term for my daughter going to secondary school and my son in secondary school for only two years now. So they both two have one half four more years, one half three more years. And if we cannot get the finance to send them, well that means they have to come out from school. And I don't willing to take my child out to school because I need them to get education because if they, that is all I could give them. And if they don't get that, well, that means they will turn just like us, like to go and work in the estate or because they're going to close, go and do something else. They're going to go and do domestic work. If they didn't have a work, where are we going to get it from? I have three children going to school. I have two go to high school, one I go to primary. And then one I go to private school, I got to get money for pay every month. And it really affected us very bad. We need the government to do something and about it. And we really, really need for um, the King got get their money. Reporting for MTV News Update, Lashona Gomes, Cornelius. More news still ahead. Do stay tuned. Using state-of-the-art technology and highly trained professionals, let Optique Vision Care assist you with your eye care. Visit any of their four convenient locations at Times Square Mall on Grove Public Road, Helena No. 1 Mahaika, at the Giftland Mall, and our newest location at 350 East Street North Cummingsburg for added convenience. Their doors are open every day in the Giftland Mall, Monday through Saturday at Grove and East Street, every Tuesday, Friday, and Saturday at Mahaika. Call them today, 266-0126-222-7333 or 227-7744. Introducing the new Softex Toilet Tissue, now available across Guyana. Softex is silky smooth because it's made from virgin pulp. Softex is soft and gentle, soft to, and every gentle touch. to every touch. Even babies can use it. Manufactured and distributed by B Pats Paper Manufacturing, Eccles Industrial Site. The, the choice, choice is clear. clear. Two Softex toilet tissue, super soft and super durable, guaranteed. Need windows for your next construction or renovation project? Then shop standard size windows from Gafors. Our standard size windows are more cost effective and can be delivered the same day. Whereas customized sizes cost more and take up to seven days to be delivered. For example, a standard size 30 by 48 inches sash window would cost you $13,800 plus fat. Whereas a customized size 32 inches by 4 to 6 inches sash window would cost $19,200 plus fat. A standard size 30 by 48 inches awning window costs $13,300 plus fat. And a customized size 32 inches by 4 to 6 inches will cost $18,900 plus fat. So, save your hard-earned cash by shopping standard size windows from Gafours. All our window profiles are available in standard size. That's awning, sash, casement, sliding, and fixed. And you can still order customized sizes if you so desire. For superior customer service, superior quality, and competitive prices, it's Gafours, the name you can trust. Here's the Whitney's update. Welcome back. 
Despite the government has already stated that three more sugar estates will be closed and the estates will be agriculturally diversified, they are still leaving room for other possibilities. As such, the government has invited the opposition party to produce a plan for the industry for discussions to commence. The government will continue to engage stakeholders on the resizing of the sugar industry, which will remain as an active sector. Moreover, the administration is even willing to engage the opposition to discuss other options that the party can put forth, said Minister of State Joseph Harmon. So, I have listened to all of the, the noises, the chatter that has been coming from certain parts of our society. But when it actually comes to actually putting down a plan of action, that is where the chatter becomes silent. And this is what we've asked all along. Let us meet. Let us see what it is that you have. Don't just wait for a press conference to criticize what the government does. You claim to have had all the experience over all of these years. Well, put your plan on the table. Let us examine it. But we are still prepared to engage at the level of the government. However, the opposition is yet to give the government a plan for the sugar industry. Instead, the opposition requested that an impact assessment study be convened on the sugar industry. Despite taking a course of action to close more sugar estates, Harmon said the government is still prepared to engage at all levels. And what is important to note, that we have an opposition that continues to make all sorts of statements, that when it was necessary for them to put on the table their plans for the industry, there was nothing there. In addition to the estimated $2 billion doled out to cover 50% of the severance to sugar workers, some $500 million was already given to the corporation in 2018 budget for severance. Coupled with this, an extensive review of expenditure in the ministerial bodies will be looked at to reduce their budgets. This will be facilitated to ensure funds are provided for the payment of sugar workers' severance packages. On divestment, the Special Purpose Unit has given positive feedback as both foreign and local companies have cited their interest in Gaisuko. The East Demerara, Skeldon and Rose Hall estates are expected to be closed this year. While workers will receive 50% of their severance by January 31, the remaining half will be paid in the latter part of the year. Sandy Ramutar. For MTV's News Update. Workers that were laid off because of the Guyana Sugar Corporation's restructuring program are set to benefit from access to loans and grants to foster business development. President David Granger announced that the government has earmarked $100 million to provide small loans for entrepreneurial activities, which could open opportunities for employment after leaving the sugar industry. This follows the establishment of an alternative livelihood program aimed at supporting the hundreds of redundant employees by enabling those displaced to access available opportunities in other fields. The government of Guyana is looking to seize its funding to Marriott Hotel in the shortest possible time. Find out more in the Snickel John report. Minister of State Joseph Harmon said certain studies were conducted on the way forward for the international branded hotel. He noted that the recommendations that were made to the government are to sell their shares. However, certain requirements have to be met. Among those requirements are to see how the value of the government's share can be increased. The Minister of State also added that what would increase its value is the entertainment complex and how it manages that aspect. The persons who analyze the asset itself felt that if we were to bring it to a certain point, where the entertainment complex is dealt with as part of the entire package, then you're likely to have a better, um, better price for it. And the Guyanese people, because this is Guyanese people's money, that the Guyanese people will be better served in that way. So in the interim, the expenses, some of the, the obligations which um, the Mart has, we have met some of those obligations, some state resources, but um, the Minister of Finance has made it very clear that this is going to be um, a very time-bound um, ob obligation and that we'll have to move to a point where we do not have to meet all of these obligations out of the Consolidated Fund. 
The Marriott Hotel was opened in April 2015 after several setbacks. The government's shareholder is the National Industrial and Commercial Investments Limited, NISL. That entity had oversight of the construction and operation of the hotel and entertainment complex. Following the years the hotel was opened, the government has been doling out large sums from the Consolidated Fund to meet its obligations. Nikhil John, the reporting for MTV News Update. Police in C Division have arrested a male suspect who allegedly robbed several persons at knife point of their cellular phones on the East Coast seawall recently, whilst the victims were either exercising or having some relaxation. All of the stolen items have been recovered. A Durban Street Lodge resident is in custody for receiving stolen property. The robbery suspect, who has given investigators a Sophia address, was apprehended in Sophia. He's expected to be placed on several identification parades in the connection with other crimes before he makes his first court appearance. The two, the two brothers and the mother of an 11-year-old girl who became pregnant last year have been arrested in connection with the matter and are currently in police custody. The child, according to the father, underwent an abortion over the weekend, despite she was six months pregnant. Here's more from Lashana Gomes Cornelius. An 11-year-old girl is now receiving special attention after she was allegedly taken to conduct an abortion being six months pregnant. The police are currently looking into the matter to ascertain the circumstances surrounding the minor becoming pregnant. Currently, the police have the child's mother and her two brothers in custody. The distraught father, D.B. Prashad, revealed to this newscast that his daughter might have been raped, but he disbelieves that it could be at the hands of any of his sons. According to the man, when he ventured to the office of the director of the Child Care and Protection Agency, Anne Green, he was shown complete disrespect and accusatory comments were dispelled by the director. The man further claimed that based upon several reports made by persons in his community, his daughter was observed communicating with a 15-year-old boy who, according to him, fled to Suriname after the matter arose. Prashad believes that the police should investigate the whereabouts of that individual before filing charges against his sons. You can't look how Miss Green saying that um, is the brother because she find out an 18 year old lived there and a 15 year old lived there. He said got to be the brother. That is how she put it like that. Without knowing the fact she jumped straight along that he is the brother. So we look like we is not people and knocking the table, you know, knocking the table with your hand, ponging up the table in a very loud tone. My wife also, they hold she in custody since Tuesday afternoon. Today, this afternoon, will be 72 hours. Just now, the corporal from Timiri rang the phone and told me that my wife have to go in $50,000 bill, and the bison have to go in $50,000 bill, and the admin is $25,000 bill. And I just told her, I say, I'm a pension, I'm not working no way. So I, I can't afford that kind of money though. However, boldly dismissing several claims made by Prashad, Director of the Child Care and Protection Agency, Anne Green, in defending the honor and safety of the child in question, related that the victim is now in a much safer environment thanks to the work of the agency. Green related that Prashad should be the last one to make accusatory claims regarding the work of the agency or of the police in handling a matter involving his 11-year-old daughter. The Child Care and Protection Agency director, quite emotional in her response, assured that the agency will do all that is necessary to keep the child safe. But the man, he should have been in the lockups. His 10-year-old, she was 10 when she got pregnant from this house. And right now, yes, she was in. We had to go to the court and get an order to remove her. She got pregnant in his house. Right now, the mother is in the lockup, and he should be too. They know who, who impregnated the girl. We have not done anything that we had to do. The court gave us an order to remove the child. All I have done is act in the message of welfare and a child and save a child. Reporting for MTV News Update, Lashona Gomes, Cornelius. Coming up, DPI Director blazes Indian High Commission for inviting only opposition MPs to the parliamentary conference in India, and City Hall has a shortage of health inspectors, only three on the job, says Royston King.
Modern Optical Service has made it even better by introducing its budgeted spectacle line, starting as low as $10,000 for single vision lens and $12,000 for bifocal lens, available in tinted or clear, complete spectacles at affordable prices. So hurry down to our main office at 316 Middle Street or Lot 14 Diamond Public Road opposite Demerara Bank. Enjoy over 60 years of eye care experience at affordable prices. Modern Optical Service, your eye care professionals. You can be a millionaire by only spending $100 on a Daily Million ticket. Simply pick any five numbers from 1 to 26 or you can buy a quick bet for your chance to win the Daily Millions. Purchase your tickets daily Monday through Saturday to get a chance to win $1 million every day. So, feeling lucky? Then buy a Daily Millions ticket today. Remember, a ticket today could make you rich today. Introducing our new brand of all-weather fiberglass rocking chairs for complete relaxation. We supply quality, durable, and low-maintenance indoor and outdoor table and chairs for your patio, restaurants, cafeteria, reception area, and much more. So sit back and enjoy quality products from FiberTech with guaranteed factory warranty. This is MTV News Update. A thank you for staying tuned. The director of the Department of Public Information, Imran Khan, has publicly criticized the Indian High Commission for only inviting opposition members of parliament to the Persons of Indian Origin Members of Parliament conference. However, he received no support of the government as State Minister Joseph Harman distanced the government, claiming it is Khan's personal opinion. Michael John to follow this report. Taking to his Facebook page was the director of the Department of Public Information, Imran Khan, who criticized the Indian High Commission for only extending invitation to opposition members of parliament to attend the Persons of Indian Origin Members of Parliament Conference, excluding the indo guyanese Ministers of Government and Members of Parliament. Minister of State Joseph Harmon has clarified that the statement made by Imran Khan who is the director of the Department of Public Information, was not expected. He noted that Khan's comments may have been in his personal capacity, to which he is entitled to. However, the government cannot control those kinds of actions. And all we can do is ask that if you are in government, that you exercise a certain amount of restraint in putting out information there, which are your personal opinions. I've seen the, the, the thing, the article in the newspaper, and what I would say is that it does not represent the position of the government. We have excellent relations with, with India, and we continue to work on those relations. Minister Harmon said the relations between India and Guyana has been a mutual one since it was established in 1965. He added that Ghana is working to ensure that bilateral relations continue to be beneficial and to have it improved. In our view, it did not matter if it came directly individually or what, but at once it had to do with government members of parliament, that the chief whip was the person who thereafter engaged with the high commissioner, who is a representative of his government here in Guyana. 23 members of parliament and three mayors represented Guyana at the People of Indian Origin Parliamentary Conference in India. Opposition Chief Whip Gilti Shira, during an interview said, the forum has been facilitated to forge stronger ties with persons and discuss parliamentary issues globally. In addition to this, the forum will pave the way for those persons to reconnect with their ancestors. The conference was the first of its kind held in Delhi, India on January 9 by Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Nikhil John, the reporting for MTV News Update. City Hall currently has a shortage of health inspectors with only three attached at the agency. According to Tom Clark Reston King, the city is in need of approximately eight more. Yanis Abrams followed the story. 
During a press conference with Tong Clark Rice and King and City Council officials, it was revealed that the council has only three food and hygiene inspectors. King announced that from January 15, the council would increase food handlers' registration fee to $5,000 from $3,000. Operational costs have influenced the council to increase the fee for food handler certificate from $3,000 to $5,000. Again, all fees must be paid to the city treasurer's department. Later, the city will introduce special training for food and beverage managers. Upon completion of their training, they will be issued with a different certificate from the one given to regular food handlers. The Chief Environmental Officer Carl Day also stated that the council will begin to inspect hotels, guest houses, and breakfast facilities on a monthly basis and will have grading system according to the environmental standards. We now have a grading system in terms of A, grade B, and C. And the grading will be determined by the basic public health requirement within 2801. There are some requirements for large houses that are in 2801. Location of these hotels, as well as the franchise base, that will determine whether it will be a grade A, B, or C. And in keeping with what the TC said earlier, we have been registering some of these hotels previously that has not reached the requirement. It was so revealed by Tom Clark that the council will be looking to summon property owners for having dilapidated buildings in the city and also for not occupying their lands. And I have asked our lawyers to research an approach to allow council the leverage to sell such properties to recover monies and to recover such monies we use to tidy up or to demolish such derelict buildings. Reporting for MTV's News Update, I am Yanis Abrams. The Hinterland Electrification Company Incorporated is working to install energy meters in the community of Mabaruma Region 1. But this move will allow the residents to pay for electricity based on their consumption, Chief Executive Office of HECI Horace Williams explained. Williams further stated residents have been paying a fixed fee for the supply of electricity. The initiative is expected to begin in February with consultations between the Regional Democratic Council, Mabaruma Town Council and the residents. The company has approximately 200 meters remaining from a recent project and other meters from GPL that will be used for the initiative. More news ahead. Stay tuned. Save big with everyday low prices at Highway 401 Furniture Store. Choose from our huge inventory of elegant home furnishing or let's build you a custom piece to suit any room in your home. Elegant dining room sets to sophisticated living room designs. Accessorize your kitchen with modern pieces from our collection. Transform your bedroom with standard against size beds and mattresses, bedside sets, and vanities. Shop now. Save big at Highway 401 Furniture Store. Making your home a beautiful place. Financing and layaway plans available. Our Mohan Supermarket is your one-stop shop for everything you need. Our Mohan Supermarket carries your entire favorite brand name goods, as well as many of the locally produced goods at the lowest prices. Groceries, toiletries, confectionaries, household items, personal care items, fresh meats, all alcoholic and non-alcoholic beverages at unbeatable prices. Spend $7,500 and more and receive a free gift while stocks last. Pay your bills at Bill Express, also money transfer at Western Union, all at one convenient location. Location. Visit us today at 36 to 37 New Road, Fridden Hoop, West Coast, Demerara. Telephone numbers 2540334 or 2540666. For delivery, check out Top Notch Taxi right next door, 24 hour service. Telephone numbers 2541324 or 2541325. Eh eh! BB! Is we going with so much Windex for clean windows? All them fancy curtains, it's not even Christmas! Hi, girl, mind your own business. I got big plans. 
But BB, your house don't even have windows. Hey, hey girl, you ain't think I know it ain't got window? Yes, I know it ain't got window. But look, Mokesh promised me that he carried me down by the window factory when he come home at Eccles. It named Beeson. Like you know nothing, girl. Right now, everybody talking about how Beeson got the strongest windows. Plus, they got a deal right now. If you buy 10 windows, you get a free bathroom window. So I could mind you business instead of you minding me own. Beeson Windows and Doors. Serving Guyana with the highest quality standard windows for your home, office, or commercial building. You are tuned to News Update. Welcome back. Town Clark Royston King has flip-flopped on the decision to introduce garbage collection fee at $200 per barrel, despite he had courageously affirmed this will begin by February 1. Instead, he is now claiming that public consultations will be held to have a definitive figure. Yanis Abrams with that story. Proposed fees for garbage. Since our last press conference, we have been receiving feedbacks on this propose, proposal uh, from individuals and groups. During a previous press conference, town clerk Royston King announced that the council will be introducing a fee of $200 per barrel of garbage from February 1. King has now somersaulted, claiming that there will be public consultations from January 18 for three weeks. The idea is to give citizens an opportunity to share their views and ideas about this proposed fee. Also, over the next three weeks, we would have similar meetings across the city. We place great store on the views of all of our citizens. In September, the council had introduced commercial garbage collection fees for businesses. The council had placed businesses into three categories in which business owners had to pay $5,000, $8,000, $12,000 according to the size of the business. Tom Clark announced that the solid waste collection is expensive and the council needs to find initiative ways to earn revenue. Reporting for MTV's News Update, I am Yanis Abrams. Currently, the Region 5 administration is consulting with Guyana Sugar Corporation to obtain a plot of land to resolve the region's solid waste management woes. Regional Executive Officer Ovid Morrison revealed that the road to the present dump site of Rosignol is extremely inaccessible to vehicles, particularly during the rainy season. While the Region Administration has set aside $905 million for the rehabilitation of the pathway to the Rosignol site this year, the REO explained that they are looking towards a more long-term solution. Consumers are warned against the purchasing of foreign labeled products as it poses a threat to health. It is also illegal to import, sell, or distribute those foreign labeled articles on the local market. Sani Ramatar followed this report. Director of the Government Analyst Food and Drug Department, Marlon Cole, is warning against the use of foreign labeled products. According to him, documentations received often contradict the country of origin of the product. Well, there is um, instruction on some labels and you need to be able to interpret um, the level of calories if there is any um, st storage instructions after breaking cans and so and there is also there is possibility allergic reaction in addition to it being in a foreign language you not being able to um, identify the exact name and address of manufacturer and so forth. If there is a case where something would have gone wrong, in some cases it could be a misleading or uh, misnomer on the uh, label and the address. Storage, climate conditions and instructions have been cited as the main inherent dangers of purchasing such products. However, in a case where a foreign label product is imported with a parallel English label, those items will be allowed entry. The Food and Drug Regulations of 1977, Section 1815, stipulates that declarations made on labels of any food, drugs, cosmetics, or medical devices must be in English language, making it an offense to import, sell, or distribute those foreign labeled articles on the local market. Sandy Ramutar for MTV's News Update. 
The Ghana Trade Union Congress and another third party entity are in discussions to select an individual to start an arbitration process between the Ghana Postal and Telecommunications Workers Union and the Ghana Telephone and Telegraph Company. This comes after the company failed to increase wages and salaries for their workers. More on this, Yanis Abrams report. President of the Ghana Postal and Telecommunications Workers Union, Harold Shepard, told News Update that the union is trying to ascertain why there is a delay in the arbitration process with the union, Ghana Telephone and Telegraph Company, and a third party. In November, the union asked the Department of Labor to look into the issue of Ghana Telephone and Telegraph Company employees not being granted wage and salary increase. During an exclusive interview with Junior Minister of Social Protection, Keith Scott, he told News Update that the Labor Department is trying to facilitate the two entities to have discussions on the issue, but the union insisted on having arbitration. That's the process. That is not like the normal arbitration. Right now we have um, gone ahead and we are, are, are have asked Tuesday and Fitter for them to give us one of the persons who will sit on a panel to begin the process of arriving at, at the arbitration. Shepard mentioned that the union is trying to engage a third party for the negotiation, but will not disclose the proposed individual. Reporting for MTV's News Update, I am Yanis Abrams. Stay tuned for Court Roundup, the Demer Harbor Bridge schedule, as well as the Guyana Stock Exchange. With enhanced vision, your eyes become the windows to the world, appreciating moments as you capture life in every image, creating memories and discovering the beauty around us. See, do and enjoy any occasion of life in style with superior lens technology from De Silva's Optical. With Transitions, Crizal and Verilux lenses, you'll find the perfect fit for you. De Silva's Optical South Road. Look better, see better. The secret is out. Tayo's Future Shop is the absolute best place to shop if you're looking for quality products at the lowest prices in the widest possible variety. Choose from a vast array of custom-made quality wooden furniture in endless designs. Electrical and household appliances. Clothing. Cell phones and accessories. And much, much more. Tayo's Pizza Shop and Household Appliances, located at Anna Caterina, West Coast Demerara. Free delivery available. Credit, no me know the secret. I like all oh, you know the secret. Everybody know the secret. <laughs> Here is what went down at the Georgia Magistrates Court on Friday, January 12th. The second accused in the murder of Purcell Moore Jr., who was gunned down at Craig Old Road, East Bank Demerara, last December, was on Friday hauled before Chief Magistrate Anne McLennan for the capital offense of murder. Selwyn Dawson, 21, called Popskull, a first field at Canevale, East Bank Demerara, was not required to plead to the charge which alleged that, on December 20, 2017, at Old Road, Craig, he murdered 40-year-old Moore during the course of a robbery. He has been remanded to prison until January 22. More than two weeks ago, 21-year-old Kelvin Prasad of 14th Avenue Diamond East Bank Demerara was also charged and remanded for Moore's murder. 
According to reports, the father of two was robbed of his gold chain and other jewelry. He sustained two gunshot wounds to the head during the attack. Reports are that the man returned from French Guiana several weeks ago and may have been watched by his attackers. Meanwhile, following the raid of Diamond Hotel and Nightclub, George Street Work in Russ, two persons were charged with trafficking five Venezuelan nationals for sexual exploitation. Rodwell Demister and Fiona Hopkinson appeared before Chief Magistrate Anne McLennan and denied the five counts of human trafficking when the matter was called on Friday behind closed doors in Court 1. The charges alleged that the duo during the months of September 2017 and January 5, 2018, trafficked Venezuelan women for sexual exploitation at Diamond Hotel and Nightclub. The duo has been remanded to prison until January 22. And finally, a 34-year-old taxi driver was on Friday placed before the court for sexually assaulting two sex workers and was released on $400,000 bail by Chief Magistrate Anne McLennan. Tarson Sample of Tugville, Georgetown, is charged for sexually assaulting a woman on December 1, 2017 at Georgetown and another woman between January 3, 2018 and January 4. Sample denied the charges levied against him. Sample was released on $200,000 on each charge and the matter is adjourned until February 5. Kippany Jordan reporting for MTV's News Update. <music>
Men's has a huge selection of various styles for your wall, floor, and pool needs. All of our towels are of grade A quality, which are the highest quality tile rated. That means they last longer and are less likely to damage or crack. We're the sole distributor for many reputable companies around the world. At Lens, we have special deals for contractors and bulk shoppers. Shop at any of our three locations to get the best in towels. Lens, our product, your creation. And welcome to MTV News Update Entertainment Guide. We begin with the latest release from Soccer Artist Vanilla is all set for tomorrow. And this song is titled Family. Yes. Am I right? Oh, Tell yes. us about family it. Family one, big family. I'm a love you up, love you up. <laughs> Tell us about it. Uh, family was basically inspired by um, my performance on the road last last year, March, which is uh -huh. 2017. The love and the energy and the, just so much love I received from the people um, last year. And I think that was because um, I wasn't on top of the truck, which I usually am. I was more, um, I was well decked out in my individual, please display the thing and stuff <laughs> like that. And the love I received from the people yesterday totally influenced mm -hmm. uh, the song Family. Um, and basically, that's what it talks about, the love that, that happens on the road march day. And sharing that energy and vibe with the people and that's what family is about basically and all those people out there family is a video that you need to see check it out on NCN tomorrow at 15 30 hours official, official official launch at 15 30 hours tomorrow on NCN before we continue give us a sample of that song oh yeah when my family there we me family there. We go jump up like family, push back like family, wind down like family, get down like family. We me family there. Look me family here. We go fat like we are one family. We go jump up. Vanilla, as a veteran local soca artist, mm -hmm. give us your thoughts on the state of the local music industry. Um, hmm. The industry as it is, as a matter of fact, let me retract. We don't necessarily, we don't have an industry. We're working to build one. Mm -hmm. And the only way it will work is if we can find a way, uh, and I'm talking, about, I'm talking about musicians, artists, people in the creative industries, if we can find a way to work together so that we could talk to the government as one voice, so they can really hear that we're saying something and not separate voices. And I think once we can do that, it does not matter which government it is. Once you can go as a body to speak to the government about uh, our challenges, I think that will help us to move forward. In terms of the copyright law, are you pushing government to put that legislation in the parliament? Um, as, as, far as, as far back as I can remember, since I've been involved in music, even before I started uh, singing, I have been on the train and the fight of pushing for the copyright um, laws. The thing is, I don't, I can't, I, I, I'm stopped believing, oh yes it will this and yes it will that. I need you, I need to see actions and as it is now, even for MASH, their action is not showing that you really want to see the creative industries grow. And so I am just waiting on the government to see what they will do and I will continue to push the fight that hey, we need the copyright laws. And not only that we need it, the other thing that people need to focus, it, or focus on is that yes, you get the copyright laws today, what are you doing tomorrow? The government can pass it today, what are you doing tomorrow? So those are some things for the people in the industry to think about. And as we continue with the entertainment guide, I'm here with soca artist Jumo Primo, and he's all set to release his new single, titled Harder. Jumo, go ahead and tell us about the song. Well, basically, Harder, um, we've been getting great reviews on the song. It's been um, crazy on the radio stations. Uh, the video, if you haven't seen the video yet, is immaculate. It's something different. It's like a different universe. And, um, well, we're talking about harder. It means that everything that you do in life, you got to go harder at it. You know what I mean? If you do, if you do good last year, you want to do better this year. So, you know, guy, and you say, bye, going harder, go home. You understand? So that's the meaning of harder. Like I'm saying to everybody, harder, we're talking about carnival, we're talking about mash, we're talking about going hard for the festivals that coming, because, you know, we now get in Guyana Carnival for the first time 
you know we want to create a good impression you know what i mean we have mash we want to go hard for mash you understand me so that is what the song is telling you about before we continue give us a sample of harder on the road we going harder 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 mash money we taking over over, over, carnival we harder, harder, harder. Somebody say, Whoa, Apart from harder, what else are you working on? We have a lot of things happening now. Um, we know we've been recording from since last January. So for me, 2018 is the new old years. So I working for 2019 now. You know what I mean? So every other week we're gonna be releasing a different song. Now the next song that is coming out is geared to the old entire Guyana because you know you find the name of that, one? that one is Ring Ding, Ring Ding Wine. Yeah, that's a Ring Ding. I mean, it's a ring ding diggy diggy ding 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 wine. Ring diggy diggy ding 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 wine. Ring ding diggy diggy ding 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 wine. Ya just give me that look back, sweet wine snake. Slow. <laughs> and that's all we have for you on this week edition of the Entertainment Guide. As always, I'm Rajesh Lak and I encourage you to have fun and be safe. I've traveled through the stars and many moons to find you. Well, that's all we have for you in our newscast tonight, but before we go, here's a recap of our major headlines. Government prepared to support Guyanese living in Venezuela amid the worsening economic crisis. Government left to fund its own hydropower projects, assess the finance minister. And more sugar workers tell government to use some of the oil bonus and pay severance packages in full. And in court, duo arrested for trafficking five Venezuelans for sexual exploitation. The newscast can be viewed online on MTV's Facebook page and also on our YouTube channel. The news will be rebroadcasted later tonight at 23 hours and at 6 hours at 30 on Saturday, January 13. On behalf of our news and technical teams, I am Ashley Scotland thanking you for watching. Remember to be vigilant on the roadways. Do not drink and drive as you put not only yourself but other road users at risk. Do have a safe and productive weekend. Good night.